Well, hello everybody. Welcome back. Jiu-Jitsu 2000 here today. I'm back and I have an interesting video for you. Today I want to talk about the Stanley Adventure fry pan. And I want to make some scrambled eggs today in this video. And what I have here in this bowl is I have some egg batter that I had left over from making some fried chicken. So what I want to test in this video is I want to test the thickness of this three-ply heat distribution portion of the pan and I also am going to be using an alcohol stove in the back this is a fancy feast stove and this is uh, the same kind of stove but I use a Vienna sausage can so in this video today I'm going to be using the fancy feast and right here I have a blend of alcohol this is uh, one part heat to one part 91% uh, isopropyl alcohol now the heat that I use is the one that is in the yellow bottle. I don't use the red heat. So stay with me. I hope you enjoy the video. This is going to be fun. There's a couple of things that I want to check in this video today. One of them is the distribution of this little stove. Is it going to be heavy duty enough? Is it going to be strong enough to hold this pan? I believe it, it is. I believe that it's going to be great. I think it's going to work out just fine. So we're going to put together our spatula. We're going to set our plates aside and our cutting board, everything aside. We are going to get our trivet out, and we are, this pan looks dirty, but I, I honestly just cleaned it. So I fried some, some potatoes in it. So let me just wash it out real quick, just wipe it real quick. Let's lock this down, and let's go ahead and get our stove fired up. Again, this is an alcohol stove, and this takes a very special blend of alcohol. We're going to get that thing preheated and it shouldn't take long to get this thing going there's a closer look at the heat distribution the heat coming off of the stove going into that three ply material so we should have no problems heating that pan up at all just smear this around you can see how thin of a coat it is all that amount of oil that I've got in there is just enough to make it non-stick almost so we're gonna get that baby nice and heated up you can see that the alcohol stove is working very well we're gonna get this egg and we're gonna test it see if we're ready yep and it looks like we're ready so we're gonna pour those eggs in there we might, we might even get away with an omelet type idea here. And I'm going to let the camera continue to run in real time because I want you to see how effective these little alcohol stoves are as well as how effective the heat distribution is on this pan. So I might be moving the camera around a little bit from here to there. So don't pay too much attention to that. So in the meantime, I'm just kind of cleaning up the plates, getting the plates ready, and I'm letting that stuff cook. Nothing too crazy. I really like this set. And I'm looking down at the alcohol stove, and it's putting out a good flame. Let me uh, lower this camera real quick. Bear with me. see the heat is coming down really nice and again like I mentioned I'm not trying to make this a long boring video but I do want to leave it in real time so you guys can see exactly what's going on as we as we go so far so good I'm gonna take the spatula here and see what's going on we're gonna make scrambled eggs today you can see that they're starting to stick a little bit to the spatula. Nothing too crazy. Now in this mixture, because I used it for fried chicken, 
it's it was two eggs and it had a little bit of uh, regular milk in it so nothing too crazy this video will probably be good because it's not only going to show the cooking ability of the stove but it's also going to show how the pan does and you can see that the eggs are starting to form already you can see they're just scrambling away no problem in fact there's plenty of heat coming out of this little stove a lot of people doubt alcohol stoves they don't think that they're effective enough to cook real food and they couldn't be further from the truth these little stoves put out plenty of heat uh, they're quiet too so you don't have to you don't have to pump any fuel pumps you don't have to do anything and they're they're nice for out in the wilderness because like I said they're quiet they don't take any any they don't make any sound so you're not sitting there scaring the the wildlife and things of that nature look at how quick that thing's cooking and look at the amount of fuel down there I haven't even begun to use fuel I filled that stove all the way up and it's it's almost done and I haven't even used hardly any fuel so they're they're effective little stoves a lot of people think well how could you do that with a tomato paste can and a fancy feast uh, can well that's it right there folks that's how you do it and you can see that just because of the little bit of oil that I put in I'm not getting any crazy sticking uh, to the pan and the spatula is working really good as well Stanley did a great job with this pan the ability to distribute the heat evenly is just it's amazing it's they've done a really good job I really enjoy this pan a lot in, in my opinion it's probably one of their better products that they put out look at that heat you can see all of the eggs not just you know in one specific area it's the whole pan cooking you can see the milk coming out of the eggs a little bit my daughter loves her scrambled eggs like that with milk in them personally I don't care for it but she likes it look at that they're just cooking away no problem beautiful pan it's definitely a good addition to the rest of my Stanley gear and you can see because I left this video in real time and I didn't do any cuts or, or skips or anything you can see that the stove and the pan in combination with each other has more than enough power to cook and the consumption of fuel it hasn't used much at all I'm very impressed with the amount of fuel I'm going to just let those cook a little bit. I've got another pan here, 32 ounce pan. I'm going to I'm going to boil a little water after the eggs are done. I'd like to have some tea. So let's take a look. All right. Looking good. These eggs are almost done. So in the meantime, I'm going to get my mullein leaves ready for my mullein tea. For those of you who might not understand, these are leaves that I picked off of a mullein plant a few days ago. And I'm, I'm, I'm letting them dry. And I only need a leaf or two for some tea. So I'll use, I'll use those two little ones and that larger one. So this makes excellent tea. This is good for... A lot of things. So in the meantime, while I'm waiting for that to cook, I'm going to get over here use this cutting board. And I'm going to cut up this mullein. These are already dry, some of them. 
the steam that comes off of mullein when you uh, when you boil it well we're not actually going to boil it we're going to steep it but if you were to boil it the steam that comes off of it is good for your lungs we're going to steep it as tea so we're not going to be doing any boiling Let's look at those eggs looks like I let them go a little bit too long but that's okay looks like those eggs are about done Look at how beautiful them eggs look. Those are just really nice. Good eggs and the fuel we haven't even we haven't even got into the, the fuel yet. So let's get some water in here. I'm gonna pour about 16 ounces of water. So it's nice on these Stanley products because they have the measurement right here where you can tell how much water you've got. And I'll go ahead and put the, the lid on. Let's get our mullein out of the way. I think them eggs are done, folks. They're done. Wow, that turned out nice. Those eggs are amazing. Where's our trivet? Right there, so I can set that down. And let's move this stove. Eh, nah, it's fine. We'll set that water there. And I would like a little cheese on my eggs. You know what? I'm going to put them on the plates, I think. Let's move this over. Move this stove over here. Hopefully you can still see everything I'm doing. I know i got a lot going on right now. <laughs> So let's take the mullein and we'll just set it right there for now. And let's dish up a couple plates. The trivet works really nice. So we're gonna go a little bit of eggs right here. Whoops, look at me spilling it all over the all over the pinch. The dogs, I throw it on the floor and the dogs love it. cheese on them and we'll let that cheese melt I like a little more cheese than my daughter so that looks delicious got the two sporks let's take a look at that how does that look looks delicious how's our water starting to show little signs of, of getting hot I like the way that Stanley did these pots because they gave us plenty of area on the bottom and it makes for very good heat distribution. Let's look at that. See how the flames just kind of roll out of the stove up, up onto the bottom of the pot? Pretty cool. Very effective. I like the way they did that. Sorry for that crazy camera work there, folks. trying to keep things all together so in the meantime these eggs are letting the cheese melt the eggs are just about done cheese is melting on them let's see what this looks like so we got a little bit of mess the cleanup shouldn't be too bad doesn't look bad at all I mean that's pretty much standard when you're cooking scrambled eggs water starting to show more signs of getting hot it's not quite to a boil yet but it's getting hot 
little stove is effective. One thing that I really like is the bottom of the Stanley pans, at least that one. That's the uh, Stanley, oh I forget what they call that one. It's the Adventure Cook and Store set, I think. It comes with the three little containers. So those little green containers are good because you can put cheese in them, honey in them, whatever you want to put in them and it works really good. They're good good pots. And the 30 ounce mark right here, but you can actually get almost 32 ounces in that pot. It'll be like full to the brim though. In the meantime, while I'm waiting for all of this, I think I'm going to try those eggs. I've got a headlamp on because I was out goofing out. Let's take a look at these eggs. Mmm. Ooh, those are delicious. I didn't put any salt or pepper. I should have. Mmm. Man, that is tasty. Those are some good eggs. Mmm. There might not be none left by the time my daughter gets out here. It sounds like we've reached a boil. Not quite. We've got a very light boil. Those eggs are delicious. Yep, we are at a pretty good rolling boil now. Hopefully you can see that. We've got a good rolling boil. So now we need to put our stuff in our tea. But I need to check the bottom of this. Yeah, it's cool enough to the touch. So I can set this down on the regular bench. And I'll use my trivet right here to let my tea steep. So let's make sure that we get those nice and mixed in. Let that steep. And you might be wondering, how are we going to kill the stove? How are we going to kill that stove? Killing the stove is pretty simple. I just take a can here, some kind of container, and put it over and leave it over there for a little bit of time and what that does is that smothers the oxygen and it puts the flame out there you go so that's what we're dealing with now how much fuel did we use in the fancy feast stove not much at all I would say probably half of the amount of fuel so we used probably maybe an ounce of fuel two ounces not much you can see it's still half full so we could have done quite a bit more cooking but we were able to make some tea as well as some scrambled eggs using our Stanley pot and our Stanley pan and the fancy feast stove it was a lot of fun now one thing I want to talk about is the fancy feast stoves in relation to the Stanley cook sets if you look at the the old-fashioned one here on the bottom there's this rim right here and I really like that because it fits it fits right on the fancy feast stove and that's nice because you get this good secure feeling of placement when you put the pot down the bottom of this pot does the same thing it has that same feature I'm not gonna lift it up too much but let's get it above the camera here and I'll show you let's look up See that? It's got the same thing. I've got the tea 
in there so I don't want to get too crazy but you can see right there it kind of matches up just right and I like that for the fancy feasts stoves works good it's a good feature to have so folks that pretty much concludes our video today ooh oh that tea is smelling good let's take a look at that tea oh my gosh it smells delicious look at the color of it it's coming along mullen tea what I use for sweetener is honey and that is some excellent excellent tea now there's one thing I want to tell you guys before I go that is when you pour the tea out of the pan you have the ability to use this strainer here but I don't recommend relying on that you know it'll keep the, 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 the media out of your cups let me move this real quick but it's not going to do anything to get rid of those little hairs that are in the mullein plant. If you swallow those, you're going to have some issues with those things getting into your throat. And it makes kind of a hard, uh, kind of an irritation kind of feeling. So what I like to do is I like to take these coffee filters... And I'll set them down in here just a little bit and I'll pour the material in here and it'll hold back any of that nasty stuff that we don't want in our throat. Something like that. So now I don't need to use the lid and all that. I can just pour this thing in directly without any problems. And let's take a look here and I'll show you what is held back when we're finished not just the debris itself not just the media because I'll use the, the pan here I'll pour it out of that little hole you can see it's coming out kind of the side of the top that's okay we're still holding the the media in there the leaf media Hot's hot, so I got to cool my thumb off. My thumb was getting warm. So even if you do it like this and you keep the leaf media back, again, I can't stress it enough. That's not really going to cut it because there's nothing that's more irritating than having mullein tea that scratches your throat. It's not like a major thing, but it's it's enough to make it uncomfortable, at least for me anyway. So there we have it, just kind of pouring the tea. And again, what's left is the mullein leaves. So here we have our coffee filter, which kept those little hairs and stuff out of the, uh, the tea. So now we have a good good pot of tea here that we can pour into our cups. Right there. And now we can drink our tea and eat our eggs. And if you smell those that steam coming off and you bring that into your lungs, that is really good for you. Mullen is excellent for things like that. So folks, I want to say thank you for joining me today on this quick little video. It looks like I'm having a battery dying indicator on my camera, so I kind of got to cut it short. These cups are pretty cool because the tea is really hot, but they're, the cups aren't hot. They're very well insulated cups. I just love mullein tea. Good stuff. I didn't put any honey in it, but usually what I'll do is I'll put about one teaspoon of honey in a cup this size. Mm. 
it's still too hot. <laughs> it's still hot, but it's it's almost there. Mmm. Mmm. I love Mullen tea. The taste is amazing. You guys need to try it. It's good for you. Make sure that when you make the Mullen tea that you do not boil the Mullen. You, the water gets to a boiling temperature, then you put the leaves in and remove it from the heat and let it steep. Anywhere between 10-15 minutes. I let this one steep only about 5 minutes. But, still good tea. Obviously the longer you let it steep, the, the, the deeper the tea is going to get. Still steaming. Got my headlamp on. <laughs> I was out here in the shop today goofing around, and what I was doing was I was taking my grinder to the spine of my knives. Some of these moras didn't have a didn't have a very sharp spine, so that's what I was working on. I got this tiny little ferro rod, but now it throws some sparks. So I just laid it down on a block of wood and. Did a little grinding on the edge. This is a Mora heavy duty, and from the from the factory, the 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 edge, the spine, is not sharp. It's not a good 90 degree spine. Mm. It's just heat all the way down. It's really good. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a beautiful day. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.